New technologies are being introduced every day in schools, and while many of them are novel and fun, they don't always connect with the current interests of students. This causes many technologies to lose their effectiveness soon after the novelty wears off. So what can we do to make sure that technology is more than a gimmick in the classroom? And how can we ensure that it keeps students interested? I'm Dr. E.T. and this is Ed on EdTech. At the BED conference, I had the chance to connect with speaker, author, and ICT evangelist Mark Anderson. All right, I'm here with Mark Anderson. Um, he is also running this huge Twitter called ICT Evangelist, and I've been seeing just the, the number of tweets, the activity, and everything. What's the gap? What is the difference between a technology that is actually useful versus something that's eh, a little bit gimmicky? Tweets earlier today from somebody who was uh, talking to somebody about resources, mm. and they shared a resource, and they said, uh, "Well, you know, could you not make me a lesson plan?" Yeah. I'm like, well, and, and I, I saw that tweet, and I was like, "Well, the thing is, the research says." Yeah, that you know, relationships are really important yes. in the classroom. And you build those relationships by getting to know your students, by um, working with them, by you know, talking to their parents, mm -hmm. by working with them for a long time. And so when you develop a lesson plan, you develop it based upon what your knowledge is of your class. Right. Asking someone to make a lesson plan for you who isn't you know, the teacher of that particular class. Right. Yeah, they can provide resources, yeah, it might be innovative, yes, it might be great and the rest of it, but is it going to be suitable for your particular class? We're trying to capture the children's imagination around Pokemon and they were yeah, using yeah, yeah. Pokemon in the classroom. And lots of teachers was, I, I made that not long after Pokemon Go came out. Oh, and lots of teachers, particularly okay. in Prime on, on social, were quite scathing of this sort of approach. But the thing is, it's about what works with you, with your class, with your students. Who, let's say, follows um, a, a football team like Arsenal or Chelsea. Oh, or yeah, Manu. yeah. That's so, a totally could, different could you, story. <laughs> could you describe you know, the winning goal in the match last night? Right. They mean, the, the, the writing would be amazing. Yes. Now, it's not about teaching children mm -hmm. about football or right. Pokemon or whatever that hook is. Yeah. It, it's using that as a vehicle to elicit amazing work from them that they're really proud of mm -hmm. because they've got an interest in what they're actually talking about. We see lots of great stuff with augmented and virtual reality. You saw the yep. period of table there. Now, there are some amazing apps on there, but most of them, whilst they're all amazing and can be used in brilliant ways, they, a lot of them have a propensity to be gimmicky. Yeah. But it's about how you choose to approach those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said in that presentation a moment ago, that quote from Michael Fulham, yeah? yes. pedagogy being the driver, technology yeah. being the accelerator. And if you start mm -hmm. with teaching and learning, if you start with wanting to think about where your kids are at, thinking yeah. about where, what you want them to achieve, and then how can technology then accelerate that process, give them that learning hook, make them really interested in all of it, that's the way to go. I was curious about finding great educational content for AR and VR, so Mark introduced me to virtual iTeach founder Steve Bambury. Hi, I'm here with Steve Bambury. I work across a school group in Dubai, Yeah. Uh, and I've been there for 11 years. Um, but uh, come, come July this year, I'm actually uh, after 11 years going freelance and, um, and setting up a, a full-time VR and education consultancy. <laughs> what would you suggest um, people do to, to find like useful content you know, for VR, AR environments? The, the, be the best advice I can give you is to, is to look um, for experiences that are not just going to be ostensibly educational, but ones that can actually have impact in the classroom. Mm, mm, mm. Um, a case in point, like recently, I was asked to, to source some experiences related to natural disasters. Oh, okay, yeah. And it took me a long time to find content related to volcanoes, virtual reality content related to volcanoes, mm -hmm. that I would justify handing over to a teacher because right. many of them were just not pedagogically sound. Mm. I learned from Steve that it's helpful to have a teacher find content that works in a classroom. And that's why I'm so grateful to work with a global content department of teachers who are curating content and making complimentary lessons for popular online videos, while still making sure that they meet the objectives of the required curriculum standards. I learned from Mark that if a student is going to learn from a teacher, then the teacher also needs to learn about the student. And this is one of the reasons why we made it easy to customize every lesson to suit the interests of your class. In Snow.Live, the text, images, and videos for every lesson can be adjusted to ensure that you can keep students interested. What tips do you have for keeping students interested using technology? Please leave a comment below, and if you're looking for more tips on using technology in education, subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.